I watched in horror as some of my body fluid splashed onto some surface and my organs went catapulting away from me. My fingers and toes stretched for miles to various points of infinity which were overlaid and constructed of rainbow eyes and toothy smiles of distorted, wizened faces. Disclaimer, this video is for informational, educational, and indeed entertainment purposes only. Viewer research and discretion is advised before going further down the sage rabbit hole. Sage, from the Latin salvus, or safe, to salvia, meaning healing plant, or in reference to sage advice, meaning profoundly wise. You may not have realized it, but there is more to this herb than just the aromatic, deep fried, crunchy leaves on top of your pork chop. Sage is a herb whose history with humanity runs long and deep on many levels. The variety of sage known as Salvia Divinorum, Sage of the Ghosts or Diviner Sage, which some of you may have growing right now in your garden, can be credited to being able to induce some of the most intense mystical experiences this side of your neighbor Zog's DMT pipe. But more on this later. Salvia officinalis, or common sage, is a perennial evergreen shrub with woody stems, grayish leaves, and blue purplish flowers. It's a member of the mint family and native to the Mediterranean region, uh, although it has been naturalized in many places throughout the world. As with many herbs, along with its musky flavour notes we all know and love so much in English favourites such as sage and onion stuffing, or as the perfect accompaniment to many a cut of offal, it is also used for its medicinal properties for a vast array of symptoms encompassing everything from depression to flatulence. What more could a human need? The history of its use in various spiritual practices stretches way back. Now, you may have heard of the term smudging. It's the practice of burning sage as incense to cleanse a room or space of unwanted energies before engaging in the rest of one's practice. Now, debate rages around sage's use in this manner. In Christianity, it's argued by some Christians that those who burn incense for any other reason than to flavor the air are engaging in sorcery and sacrilegious acts as only God, the one God, the only God, the God of gods, can give you salvation. Other Christians, however, believe that the burning of incense during prayer symbolizes and indeed helps the prayer itself pass through to the other side into the more heavenly realms. Far-fetched religious dogma and twaddle, I hear your bullshit detector saying, Indeed, quite. I hear you, but that is, of course, until one has experienced the inhalation of salvia divinorum smoke directly, at which point any preconceptions we may have had about the magic properties of sage are turned right on their heads. Going back to smudging, smudging's been trending for a fair while now, with smudging kits being sold everywhere from your local high street to trendy urban boutiques. The new Yoga Wave and Lululemon crowd have been frantically smudging their way into the Instagram era, and in the US, Native American smudgers of old are up in arms about this. Backed by the new politically correct crusaders of the new woke age, the far left Gestapo's blood curdling screams of cultural appropriation ring loud and heavy on the ears of the vanity yogi smudging community. Quite frankly, smudging of late is a fractured and contentious subject, awash with pseudo spiritual ties, Instagram filters, and the who, what, why, where, how. I say to each, their smudging own. But before you ask yourself the question to smudge or not to smudge, why not take a deeper look at the true magic of sage, to its spiritual source, and perhaps to the gates of the Mysterium Tremendum itself. 
Salvia divinorum, the diviner's sage, sage of the ghosts. Now, whether it's made into a tea, chewed or smoked, a big enough dose of this sage is enough to turn anyone's belief system upside down, inside out, and dump it onto its Lululemon tits. So Klaus, without further ado, let me bring you up to speed with Salvia divinorum, the most wise of all the sages. Now, back in the Wild West days of YouTube, you may remember a bunch of viral videos of people suffering various levels of psychological trauma after smoking something called Mexican weed. Don't know if you remember this one, Klaus, but one of the favorites was of a man sitting on his couch who, after inhaling a hit of his bong, promptly loses his mind, shakes, shuffles, and convulses his way to the edge of the living room, and then flings himself through the glass straight out of his window to the abject horror of his missus sitting next to him. Let that be a lesson to all would-be psychonauts out there to ensure that your sitter is stronger than you should you start shuffling your way towards a window. Those of you listening to this though will be very pleased to hear that if I remember rightly, it was on the ground floor. At least I do keep telling myself that to try and forget. Other scenes of equally compelling, fascinating nature, yet deeply unpalatable viewing, contained people in all sorts of distress while their so-called friends laughed their asses off. Oh, the good old days of YouTube. Uh, there was also, of course, the YouTube sensation, Eric Hustad, whose videos of him hitting the salvia bong in his car before giving us live trip reports made him a legend. But. Despite all this mayhem, all this noise, and through all the carnage, lies the experience itself. So big and so powerful that terror is often the only outcome for someone not ready or prepared for the sheer velocity of the experience that's about to unfold. A fairly new drug to Westerners, salvia began to rise in popularity during the 90s. The late, great psychedelic prophet, Terence McKenna, both infused and warned on its discovery that it was the only psychedelic discovered since LSD powerful enough to be active in the microgram range. Now, this meant that just a handbag of the stuff, and I quote from Terence, would be enough to smash China. A gentle warning from him that he believed we should not therefore extract the chemical as people would take too much. But of course, we did. So Salvia divinorum is a native plant of the mountains of Oaxaca, Mexico, where the Mazatec people have used it in ritual and shamanic practice for centuries. It's said that they believe the plant to be an incarnation of the Virgin Mary and say that the plant speaks in a quiet voice. Now, I've read many a report attesting to the feminine nature of the experience to direct contact indeed with the feminine entity of Salvia herself. However, a stark word of caution. Although it is legal in parts of Europe and parts of the US, it remains an incredibly powerful psychedelic experience. And with stronger preparations sold in head shops all around the world, a lot of the experiences are of a somewhat darker nature. If you're enjoying this video, please leave a like and a comment, and don't forget to subscribe as we now take a look at this extract that I came across on Eroid by user Rio Gordon. Rio reports. Half a gram of smoked salvia extract. Something terrible happened. Something so disconcerting and frightening that I am beside myself with paranoia and fear that it may occur again instantly. Without any warning, my entire being exploded into a fragment of forces. There was no more me, no more room, no existence, no identity, no island, no planet, no values, no opinions, no power, just a titanic, grinding, terribly painful forces that trembled through my body and tore me to physical pieces. I watched in horror as some of my body fluids splashed onto some surface 
and my organs went catapulting away from me. My fingers and toes stretched for miles to various points of infinity which were overlaid and constructed of rainbow eyes and toothy smiles of distorted, wizened faces, all leering at me and teasing me. I was completely upended, in utter annihilating vertigo, with no container to hold my energy as my being flowed out into many parallel worlds. I felt abandoned, distant, trapped, kidnapped, raped, let down and utterly imprisoned forever. So there we are. I mean, perhaps just the type of experience one of our poor unsuspecting YouTube heroes of old was having whilst their mates <laughs> laughed at them. So spring, it seems, hath sprung finally. Nature is raising her slumbering head, and as the sun begins to shine and the blossoms begin to flourish, spare a moment as you wander through the local parks and gardens, notice the fresh, fragrant smell of your neighbor's herbs, fill your nostrils, and perhaps take a look over the fence. And lo, sitting there amongst all the other pots of plants, the Virgin Mary, Salvia Divinorum, one of the most potent psychedelic experiences, this side of the yawning grave is perhaps just a cup of tea away.